The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we're picking up right where we left off on Friday. Higher prices across the board right now. You're looking at the S&P. We just talked about record territory, folks. Zooming in on a 15-minute, let's make it even a five-minute. You make that price point last night as futures open, 45.13. We're within one point of that price level right now at 45.12. The lows overnight, 4,500 and 75 cents. We're talking about above 4,500 for the whole session right now. Tech stocks trading higher as well. We make a high of 15,455. Remarkable prices across the board, across the board. Uh, 15,449 were positive by 20 points in the NASDAQ 100. The Dow's positive by 30 points. 35,435 in the Russell, positive by four as well. You take a look at the Russell. Look at that acceleration we had on Friday. You're talking about from 2220 up to a closing price of about 2280. That's 60 points. That's almost 3%, folks. 66 points would be 3%. Remarkable action in the Russell. Basically leading the way this morning up two tenths percent when you get the Dow up about a tenth of percent You get the Nasdaq up just more than a tenth and you get the S&P up a tenth as well Crude holding pretty well. Look at that action last night. We trade to 49. Excuse me. Not 49 69 64 You trade down to 67 75, but just like that since about five in the morning crude's gotten back a dollar of those losses right now You're technically positive by six pennies, but talk about some volatility. We're six pennies from the close on Friday right now but man, what you have? Almost a $2 move down and a $1 move up just since futures were open last night at about 6 o'clock. That's 15 hours, folks. 15 hours. You got a $2 move down, a $1 move up, and we're within about a nickel from where we closed out on Friday. Gold contract, quite a week last week. We pop higher on the open last night. We're off a bit. Negative $3 on the session. You make it to $18.26.50 last night, putting gold on a daily. There you see quite the pop we got on gold. Talking about 1816, a few weeks ago, you had that flush low to 1675. And look at that action we had on Friday alone. Friday's bar, a low of 1785. You got a high of 1821, putting that back on a 15 minute. And there you see that acceleration on Friday. We make a low right at 10 a.m. Eastern time and gold to 1785. And then it takes off to the top side, giving back a few dollars so far this morning. You got silver up four cents right now. Bitcoin. Down about 1400 bucks, a little bit of negative action on Bitcoin. Ethereum's down about $100, I think, as well this morning. Crypto's negative slightly. We've got Coinbase trading with them as well. Coinbase off about $3 right now, trading at $256. <coughs> Excuse me. Jumping down the line, notes and bonds continuing to check on the market. Now, we got jobs number on Friday for the month of August. So big data point coming on Friday. We had ADP private payrolls on Wednesday. Tomorrow, the final trading day of the month of August. Remarkable that you're talking about Wednesday is September, folks. Wednesday, September 1st. Uh, nonetheless, you take a look at the 10-year. We're up one tick. A little bit of volatility on Friday, down to 132.26 in the overnight session. Bonds, notes just kind of ticking across where we closed the action on Friday. Right now, positive by one tick. And when you jump over in terms of what we're dealing with, in terms of the yield, pulling it up right now, we're talking about a yield in that tenure of just above 1.3%, 1.307% right now to be exact. And let's jump over to the VIX. Volatility index with a 16 handle, quite a drop on Friday, expectedly so with the markets accelerating higher. We're pretty much at the uh, historical average for the volatility index, 1648. Remarkable when you think about how much volatility could be priced into this market in the next uh, months to come. Uh, we got a jobs number on Friday coming up, pretty important. We've basically wrapped up with all the important earnings. We do have earnings coming out this week. We'll go over some of those later in the program. Um, but most of the big equities, you know, we had a big week of retail last week, but most of the big equities out. We got jobs number on Friday. We got a lot of jobs to make up. We're coming into uh, the end of summer trading. We're coming into the long weekend. We got coming up on Monday. We will be closed. <coughs> excuse me, September 6th uh, with the markets. But nonetheless, we kick things off positive territory to start off Monday trading so far. 
excuse me, still battling a little bit of a cold getting over it, folks. Uh, what else we got going on? Kicking things off right now. And man, Hurricane Ida in Louisiana. Um, some some tough, tough news coming out overnight, folks. Uh, if you're not f familiar with the program, uh, Oh, excuse me. I had some audio firing off on this page. I didn't know what was going on. Um, CNN feeding me audio. Um, my dad and I were in Hurricane Katrina. Remarkable. 16 years ago, August 2005. I think I was 25 at the time. Watch out. Um, a tough, tough situation then. And so I can empathize completely with being trapped in in a city like that the lights are all out and you know just the stories coming out worst case scenario seems to happen in jefferson parish louisiana officials say um they got search and rescue going on out there credit reports terrible picture they lost all <coughs> excuse me folks um they lost all power unfortunately worst case scenario seems to have happened um some of the houses are flooded with water that's beyond chest high up to the top of the roof not what you want to hear we're going to see some sad stories out here send some send some prayers send some love out to the people out in louisiana because it's a tough situation it's going to persist for a couple days over there i imagine excuse me um i mean it's just I'm stuttering because it's tough to imagine, folks, when you get flooding like that and they're talking about swampland and alligators now um, and, and no power at all. There were stories overnight that some of the generators necessary in hospitals out there were not working when they would normally be transferring some of those patients from those hospitals in high risk areas. They couldn't do that because cases of COVID are filling up hospitals. That's an unfortunate situation, um, unfortunate all around. So hopefully send some prayers out to those people out in Louisiana. It's a tough deal out there. Um, and looks to be a worst case scenario in some areas in terms of how that hit. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Um, <coughs> excuse me, folks. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, the booster shot. So this will be interesting how it happens. And I imagine that the third shot uh, is going to be available ASAP in the U.S. Because Israel, interesting that this happened. Now, Israel was the first company that really come country that really accelerated their vaccination. Um, they got a staggering amount of their population vaccinated above any other country. And when you get into it, so they are already applying um, their booster shots. I'm trying to get down to it, excuse me for scrolling here. So in late July, Israel began offering everyone above the age of 60 a third vaccine dose. Throughout August, the booster program has been gradually rolled out to more of the population, and the third shots have been available to everyone over the age of 30 as of Tuesday. Um, this has to do with, you know, some of the data showing breakthrough cases definitely possible for people who are vaccinated. When it comes to hospitalization, you're much less likely to end up in the hospital if you are vaccinated versus unvaccinated. A big part of the problem right now going on with hospitals being so full is that most of the people who are unvaccinated, if unfortunately you get hit with that Delta variant, folks, it is a tough one um, in a big way. But I imagine you're going to see that roll out. I wonder if that'll hit Pfizer. I assume it's already really priced into these equities. Um, taking a look at Pfizer. You know, it was probably priced into these equities a couple weeks ago when you had saw that run up to 52 bucks as they first began talking about booster shots, giving back some of that. We'll take a little bit of a look, because even on a slight retracement on this, we should talk about quite a move back to bring it to 45 bucks and a 50%. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps positive by six, NASDAQ positive by 20, the Dow positive by 25 across the board. I got a chart of the S&P uh, up here on a daily basis. Remarkable trend line that we continue to accelerate above. You look where we are right now, right in the middle of that channel line. This dates back all the way going back really to November. That's where things become super defined. Um, that's where this channel line was first drawn in terms of the acceleration you had from October into November 2nd. We got news in terms of the efficacy of those vaccines, which really accelerated the market. We were trading at a price point back then you're talking about 3225 we're 1300 points above that price level almost in the s p's man every time we touch that bottom boundary folks we are bouncing in a big way really perfectly too when you tie it into the acceleration we had in june the acceleration we had in july and now the acceleration we had in August, all of those bouncing off that trend line. Keep your eye on it if you're out there trading the S&Ps at all. Right in the middle of that range right now, though. Lower boundary line, you're talking about 4,500. Upper boundary line, maybe about 4,650. That or thereabouts. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Jumping around to some of the stocks uh, making moves today. As we talked about, we got some companies with earnings, but not too many. We're going to go over it. Thursday, we have some companies. We got Hewlett Packard Enterprises, Broadcom, uh, DocuSign believe out with their numbers uh yes in terms of we also get uh the adp number on wednesday we get uh the employment report friday we get a lot of different things but as of this morning so you have a firm they're going to announce a partnership with amazon that will allow amazon customers to pay over time for purchases of 50 dollars or more right so it's interesting in terms of this just came out for another company i believe i forget who it was um but that was out there on friday now, that would make sense that a firm shares are flying. What's their symbol here? AFRM. Anybody teaming up with Amazon is going to skyrocket. Look at this thing. You're going to open at 98, folks, to put this on the chart before I put it in. 98. You're going to get back all the losses you had since February. Now, what is this? Just go public probably in January. You spike up to 146 before giving it back. And there's your spike higher on that news on Friday that they will be processing payments for Amazon. Uh a firm's buy now, pay later checkout option will be available to certain Amazon customers in the U.S. starting Friday with a broader rollout in the coming months. The company said in the statement they're going to let Amazon customers split purchases of $50 or more into smaller monthly payments. I say it all the time, folks. Uh, if you can avoid this in your own personal life, please do. Credit can be a great thing. You take out some credit for a house, et cetera. When you start buying items for $75 on Amazon that you need to split out into payments, Maybe you should just hold off on that item unless you really need it. Um, 
And as it says, firm spot stock spiking dramatically higher. It's interesting in terms of some of these mammoth companies that they need to team up with a company like a firm. They probably don't need to, but they've chosen to. Uh, and as it speaks to, um, booming lending space as younger consumers move towards these alternative lines of credit. Be careful, folks. Credit card payments are bad enough. Now you're just going to start splitting out payments for retailers in particular. A firm is one of the best known installment payment options. It works with 12,000 merchants, including Peloton and Walmart. Um, yeah, and as a result, obviously accelerating higher. Now, Amazon's an interesting one. Amazon trading higher with the market this morning. You take a look at the three year weekly for Amazon. Been chopping around between 2,900 and 3,500. You did get a little bit ahead of itself as Andy Jazzy took over as CEO briefly before giving that back on their earnings. Now, they had decent earnings too, but they gave it back in a big way. Uh, not quite meeting what the market was looking for, that's for sure. Missing on expectations, decent, but missing. Uh, last week, Quite a little pop this week. We're going to open at 33.61. Be interesting to see how it trades if we get up to the highs that we had, whether you back it up to the week of April 26th. Talking about a high at 35.54. The week of August 31st, going back a full year, you're talking about 35.52. So keep those on your radar if you're trading Amazon. 35.52, 35.54, 35.50 essentially, where you may bump into some boundaries on Amazon. That's a solid $200 from where we're trading at right now. While we're jumping around to some of the FANG stocks, let's take a look at some of the others. We got Microsoft above 300 right now. That uh, all time high in Microsoft, I believe, 305 and change, 305.84. Uh, now that is intraday. You back things up, as you see, overnight we did make it to at least 306.09, that or thereabouts. You take a look at Apple. Apple shares up early as well, 148.87. We'll jump to Facebook shares, trading basically flat this morning. Netflix shares trading a little bit flat as well. Let's jump to Disney. So Disney, interesting news, Disney on Friday. I'm going to pull this one up. They are thinking about basically uh, leasing their name for the purposes of sports betting. And let me make sure I just had the article, unfortunately. Let's see if I can pull it up here. No, that's not the one I was looking at. All right, well, there's the headline from the journal that blew this thing up on Friday. Uh, ESPN explores sports betting deal with at least $3 billion. Sports media giant held talks to license. So they're going to license their brand, right? Instead of putting all the money themselves into developing a sports book, why not just collect cash for licensing your brand? Now, we own Disney in my newsletter, folks. I've been a Disney bull for a long time, but these are the types of reasons um, that I am. The, the number of opportunities this company has. I mean, compare them to a company like Netflix, right? Netflix doesn't have this opportunity, folks. They don't own ESPN, right? Sports content is some of the best content out there right now. Now, ESPN's having to pay a ton of money for those content rights. But ESPN's brand, when you get into sports betting, we're about to see what it's worth. Um, because they're looking for $3 billion. And the one of the most interesting parts of this uh, is that it's going to come with the obligation that whoever pays that licensing fee has to then pay marketing money within ESPN. Um, an offer is the right for the suitor to use the ESPN name for branding purposes and potentially rename its sportsbook after the leading sports TV networks. It'd be literally the ESPN sportsbook, right? Um, a deal could come with an exclusive marketing commitment with the, that would require the sports betting firm to spend a certain amount of money advertising on ESPN's platforms. One of the people said, no guarantee that that's going to happen yet, but they were talking to Caesars. They were talking to DraftKings. We'll take a look at those two. There's the spike, I believe, on Caesars on that news, up to 109. It gives it back pretty quickly. DraftKings, there's your spike on Friday as well. Gives it back pretty quickly as well. Um, exciting news, but maybe not as exciting when they figure out the cost of that. I mean, think about that. You're going to pay $3 billion. Then you're going to have to pay all the advertising money that comes with it. You're going to have to make 4 or $5 billion just before you break even. The ESPN gambling, sports gambling app, that might do it, though, folks. I mean, that that that's quite a name. Um, ESPN rightfully so. Uh, but that's the reason why you got that spike on Friday. You were up to 181. This morning, we're basically flat on the open. You take a look at Disney on a weekly basis, going back for the full run we had on COVID. Spike down to 79. The run in November really begins when you get efficacy data. Back this out a little. There we go. For the vaccines, you spike from 117 to 203. And Disney's been in a consolidation between about 170 and call it 182 since about May. 
Uh, and maybe this is a catalyst that pushes it over. They got some problems, though, in terms of the Delta variant. Um, they got a park in Florida, folks. Cases, I tell you, from Florida, they're, they're unfortunately at very high levels, as people across the country are aware. You talk about parks in Florida. I have two young kids. They can't get vaccinated yet. Not quite comfortable bringing them to Disney. Um, and you're seeing that pain. I got people coming down um, from the Northeast for a conference they got in the East Coast of Florida coming up next month. Uh, never did we think that we'd be pushing 26, 27,000 new cases a day in Florida in August um with what's happened but nonetheless so that's weighing on disney but folks we're going to get over it all right disney's trading at the same price 180 that it was basically trading at in december of last year uh but look for some acceleration potentially on a little sports gambling coming into the disney shares on friday not a bad deal to license those rights for billions of dollars stay tuned folks we come back for the open Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by eight right now. Zooming in on the action, we've been open for about 30 seconds, and we kick higher for barely a minute. We'll put it on a, mi mi a one-minute chart. Excuse me. A little bit of a spike to 45.14. I believe that's going to be a record all-time high. There it is, 45.14. We get it on the open. Right now, we're positive by about eight points. Record territory in the S&P. Taking a look at the NASDAQ 100. I think we just got a record print as well. Yes, we did, 15,474. 
not quite in the Dow. We're about 120 points from that price level, and the Russell still has got some room to make up. Uh, quite the consolidation the Russell's been in. You could say in that consolidation going back all the way to about February, higher range, 2366. We're about 80 points from that price level at 2282 in the Russell right now. Jumping around to what else we got going on in terms of equities making moves, Weber. Got to love a Weber grill. I got a nice Weber grill. They are not cheap, folks. You got to keep them well, though, because, man, they're supposed to stay good forever. But the premium that they're able to charge versus some of the other grills that are pretty respectable grills uh, that can last for a decent amount of time. They went public earlier this month, and they're up about 4%. We'll see how they open. Goldman Sachs initiated coverage with a buy rating. Morgan's J.P. Morgan rated the stock overweight. The firm cited set Weber's leading position in the global market as well as pricing power. Basically what I just said, right? Um Putting this back on a daily. There's the volatility up to 2044, down to 1413. We close out Friday at $16 and change, and we're up about 2.7% on that company. You take a look at the analyze tab. Do they got it in there yet? Yes, they do. I want to see the market cap. We're talking about $862 million. Remarkable what it takes to be a billion dollar company, company, folks. We almost take it for granted these days because there's so many billion dollar companies, let alone we got trillion dollar companies right now. But you got a company like Weber, makes Arguably the best grills out there in the world, and that company, not even quite yet at a billion dollars, and they are public already. Uh, nonetheless, a little bit uh, below, maybe we'll say, where they opened. I mean, yeah, you're right where they were that first day. But nonetheless, some strong numbers in terms of uh, coverage when they talk about whether it's at Goldman or J.P. Morgan, both of them liking that stock. You got Levi Strauss. Well, Wells Fargo initiated coverage with an overweight rating, the jeans maker. We'll pull them up. Now, they had some decent numbers, I think, on their earnings, right? Yeah, last uh, about last month, they spiked to a high of 30 bucks. Well, today, we're up about a percent. That's with the market, though, at 27.14. Jumping around to what else we got going on? Yeah, so the meme stocks are back. Support.com, not familiar with this stock, as many probably are not. Um, but uh, watch out for this equity. Uh, the meme stocks are alive and well, folks. You were trading at a price point one week ago of $9.24. You accelerate up to 59.69, you close out Friday's action at 26.33 and just like that you're up 50% to 39.44. We're talking about volume on Friday 166 million shares. Woof. Watch out folks. Let's see how some of the other game stocks uh meme stocks, not game stocks. GameStop up about 7 tenths percent. We got AMC shares up about 1.7 percent so far this morning. And the market continuing to slide upward. Russell continuing to struggle. Russell flat. You get the Dow up 20 points. You get the NASDAQ 100 up a solid 4 tenths per percent. Uh, look at that NASDAQ 100. I talk about the trend line in the S&Ps. So well defined going back to the acceleration and the breakout from November. NASDAQ 100 making some interesting moves as well in terms of you back it up to where we were in November. Right When you match the highs we had from a year ago, basically, in September, that correlates to the high we had from February, we're going to bump right up to that level right now. You're talking about within about 100 to 150 points from the upper boundary line, and then you look at the lows we have, yeah, you don't even have to count the low we had in September of last year. If you just take the run we had from November, you correlate that to the run we had, the pullback in March, the pullback we had in May, Right. You are far off the lower boundary line, folks. Even if the Nasdaq remains in this acceleration to higher territory, you could see a pullback to just above 14,000. That's almost a 10 percent pullback. But man, anytime you get these types of moves, you better believe it. Just zooming in on the move that we've had since May 10th. So we're talking about less than four, four months. Just going to give you a realistic price level in terms of the 382. 382 retracement of the move the NASDAQ 100 has had just in the last four months. You're talking about a move that could take it down about 1,000 points. And still, that would just be a 382. 14,508. Interesting that that would line up right where we were on July 20th as well. Always nice when you have areas of the chart, folks, that you know whether you're right or you're wrong, right? Maybe you're making a bearish trade. Maybe you're saying, all right, we're looking for an acceleration where worst case scenario, I'm taking heat to the upper boundary line in the NASDAQ 100. I set my stop above that level. It plows higher above that level. My plan is wrong. If it trades lower, I'm looking first for the lows on August 19th. We had some volume there. And next would be looking for the lows of July 19th. 
that was 708,000 shares traded, and that would correlate to that 382, about 14,508. Let's take a look at some of those FANG stocks, see how they're reacting. Amazon continuing higher. Look at that pop we've had on Amazon just in the last week or so, from 3,200 to 3,376. Microsoft has been on a tear as well. We're up 9 tenths percent on Microsoft. Remarkable, these companies continue. I mean, take, for instance, a company like Microsoft. I just talk about a remarkable a company like Weber. It's not even a billion-dollar company when billions get thrown around left and right. I mean, Weber's not a technology company, folks. They're not going to get valued on multiples like an Amazon are. They make grills, all right? Grills aren't going to take over the future. But guess what? They make some of the best grills out there. But that's why you deal with tough multiples. Point being, you look at a company like Microsoft, all right? We're up a percent today. Microsoft is a company worth $2.27 trillion. So for every percent that this company goes up, right, what are you adding? You're adding you're adding $2.27 billion. So Microsoft, the market capitalization of Microsoft today alone has increased two and a half times the entire market capitalization of a company like Weber. It, it kind of puts things in perspective of how crazy it is. Uh, you got Amazon. Amazon is up. Amazon's up $30, we'll call it. Amazon has 500 million shares outstanding. For every ten dollars, you're talking about five billion. Amazon shares are up fifteen billion dollars in market capitalization. So Microsoft's up about twenty two twenty two billion dollars in market cap. Amazon is up, what did I say, fifteen billion dollars in market cap today. You see why some of these, you know, indexes are just driven dramatically higher purely on the tech companies. You got Apple, it's up eighty five cents for simple math. Let's call it a dollar. Okay, sixteen point five billion dollars. Remarkable. NASDAQ just keeping higher, up 70 points. 15, did we get 15,500 yet? Yes, we sure did. 15,501. All right. Jumping around to what else we got going on as we wrap up this segment, continuing down the line. Uh, Generac remains on watch after rising the past eight sessions. Always interesting how this company, Generac, right? They make generators. They always accelerate. We get any type of storm. Uh, backup generators benefiting from the demand increases stemming from weather-related disruptions. You could say so. GNRC, I imagine they're doing well today. Whoops, GNRC. Yeah, up another 3%. We were just trading at a price of 383. You were just trading at a price of 300 going back to May as we came into hurricane season. You put this thing on a five-year weekly, quite a rocket ship, man. From 2018, excuse me, we end 2018 at 50 bucks, and we're trading today at 450 for that company. Let's see what kind of market capitalization we're dealing with right now. You're talking about a company versus $28 billion. Not bad, $28 billion. And uh, they are in a growing industry. Because I imagine backup generators, folks, it's going to be a thing of the future. Uh, no reason why with that type of technology that we got so many people out of power. Uh, I'm sure that's what Generac would say as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Taking a look at the markets. We get the S&Ps up five points. Tech stocks continuing higher. The Dow reversing a bit. Dow in negative territory. Look at that drop. We just dropped, what was that? Yeah, 100 points pretty quickly on the open. These are 15-minute bars. We're only 12 and a half minutes into the trading day. 35,360 in the Dow. Now, it's interesting here. I talk about the S&P channel line we got going that's pretty well defined. I'll recap it again, right? Don't have to be a brilliant uh, chart technician to see the trend and the channel line that's been forming in the S&P. You take a look at the NASDAQ. I'm going to back this off for some clarity in my Fibonacci number here. NASDAQ, pretty defined, you know, to draw a channel line, folks, right? You just got to draw the channel between the highs and the lows. NASDAQ bumping up, but check out the Dow, right? Much different situation. Now, here's the problem here, is that this doesn't quite correlate to the lows we had in November, okay, because we didn't see these types of pullbacks. I mean, correlate to where we are in the S&P. All right, there's your November correlation to zoom it in on the action. And you saw pullbacks that correlated in the NASDAQ. We never quite had, uh, excuse me, in the Dow, you did accelerate, not quite the channel line. But if you just go from the highs we had starting in November 9th, and then you start matching up the lows from February to March to June to July to August, the Dow's actually approaching. We'll extend that one to the right, right near the lower boundary line, which is interesting here. Right. Do we see the S&P uh, in the middle of the range? Do we see the NASDAQ in the upper part of the range? And we see the Dow in the lower part of the range. I mean, that would point to maybe a little bit of a rotation where we see potentially tech stocks pull back. This is all potential, folks. We're going to see it play out. We got jobs numbers on Friday, but you could see the NASDAQ as we're bumping up to that upper boundary line. Maybe that gives back some of the gains. Maybe the Dow bounces off some of those lows and the S&P is right in the middle of that range. So maybe that's where we sit there. Russell in a world of its own, the Russell really dropping as well. Check out the Russell. Yeah, so much for jumping up to highs. The Russell just gives back 20 points like that on the open. Let's check in on some of the commodities. You got crude off about 45 cents right now. Gold hanging pretty well when you look at the run that gold has had recently. You check out the move that gold has had. We had lows in March, lows in April. You challenged that low a few weeks ago, actually three weeks ago. That was a Sunday night flash low. Since then, you've traded dramatically higher. You're talking about $140 from that low, even if you look at where we were on the Tuesday. Is that right? Yes, on that Tuesday, you were still trading at a price of 17 18 so you're $100 higher on gold. We could bump up to some boundary lines, though, in terms of where uh, an area of resistance, 1837. That would be from July 29th and 1835, July 15th, as gold climbs to those levels. All right, taking a look at Bitcoin, BTC. Bitcoin right now down about $1,300. And what I want to look at here is we have, let me get it up. Where am I? Where am I? Excuse me for this for a moment. Bob Paulson was out here. Um, they got it on the front page of Bloomberg this morning. Interesting. Um, now, Paulson, been huge on gold, of course, uh, big gold guy in the past. Uh, 
shorted prime, subprime calls crypto worthless bubble. We've heard this many times before, folks. JP, uh, Jamie Dimon was out there calling it worthless a while back until they're, now they're getting into it. Um, the investor explains why gold is poised to surge on Bloomberg Wealth with David Rudenstein. He's been a gold bug before. He's back, folks. John Paulson. Um, Hasn't found anything to rival his massive short, but it's hard to top the $20 billion that Paulson made for himself. Talking about the real estate, subprime mortgage bonds collapsed. Excuse me. Um, but right there, he's looking at gold. He's looking at it in a much better way in terms of cryptos. Increasingly concerned about rising prices, he said. And I, I enjoy this show, uh, Bloomberg Wealth with David Rubenstein. I think it's, um, what are they call it? What was the name of the show? Peer-to-peer um, -peer conversations, I think. Maybe they've changed it up. Rapidly expanding money supply could push inflation rates well above current expectations. We've heard the rhetoric before. We're going to see if it plays out. He said in gold, which he's backed for years, is primed for its moment. So he's out there touting it. We'll see where it goes. Um, but he's talking about crypto being a bubble. He's talking about gold being a bull in the face of inflation. Um, but nonetheless, we'll see how that one plays out. All right, what else we got going on in terms of what they're looking for for the jobs number on Friday? So we get August numbers. They'll be looking for about 750,000 jobs added in August. We had 943,000 jobs added in July. They're looking for an unemployment rate of 5.2% come Friday. The number we had for July was 5.4. Education was a big contributor in July with 261,000 thousand jobs added in public schools and private education you might not see that impact <clears throat> be interesting to see how that plays out i'm not sure whether you know there's a lot of teachers i think that come back on the rolls in august right uh, especially up the northeast um it doesn't have to be a spectacular number to satisfy their needs that's somebody out there one analyst i imagine you need to solid jobs number something north of half a million i think we're going to be close to that they're going to want to see September employment as well. Yeah, aren't we all? We're, going, we're all going to want to see September employment as well. Uh, Year-to-date returns, staggering when you look at it. Uh, NASDAQ, we're pushing 30%. S&P, right near that number as well. The Dow, which has been a slight lag, or just under 25% when you think about where we are. And that's not factoring in the returns that we had last year. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how Ida might play into this, of course, decimating parts of the Gulf. Uh, in a big way. And uh, yeah, as they talk about, we'll slide down. We get some companies with earnings. Un Zoom, that'll be a big one. Jump to Zoom real quick. When it jump to a 15 minute on this equity, I tell you, folks, Zoom. Uh, we'll jump over to the Analyze tab. There it is. They're looking for a $26 move. That's quite a move coming into their earnings. Now you take out the earnings tab, August 30th, after the bell, $26.62. We'll jump over to the market in terms of what they're pricing in. If you want action all the way to Friday, market's pricing in almost a $30 move in either direction. And taking a look at this chart, talk about some volatility here. You make it up to 588, we come right back to its breakout area, right? Basically, we trade to a low in May on Zoom of 273. You get more than cut in half from 588. Now this company, folks, you look at the fundamentals. They are making some money, all right? I can't find it quick enough. Uh, net income. Yeah, I think that's $1.7 billion that they're making. Um, not often you get a company like this, which you could really categorize as a growth company that's just making almost a billion to $2 billion. But guess what? They're dealing with a market capitalization right now of $101 billion. That's a lot to live up to. Remarkable that they were pushing almost $200 billion at the highs. Uh, I use Zoom. It's a great company. Be interesting to see what they come out with their numbers after the bell tonight. And what else we got? We got pending home sales coming out at 10 o'clock. That'll be up right as we wrap up the program. Some of the other companies, CrowdStrike, out with their numbers on Tuesday. Let's take a look at them. Another great company that is in the growth sector. Look at this move that they've had as well. <coughs> Folks, 318 and 618, excuse me for coughing. Just getting over a slight little cold, still lingering. Um, thankfully, nothing to do with COVID. Took a rapid at-home test, but still lingering in a big way. Uh, so look at this equ equity, CrowdStrike. Okay, you're talking about an equity right now, pulling up the fundamental tab on the Thinkorswim platform, $64 billion company. Uh, they, do they just, uh, yeah, they were at $31 at the lows of COVID, just backing things up the last year. They run in November from 118 to make a high in February of about 245. And look how sweet that is. You pull right back to the 618. 
I mean, it doesn't always work, folks, but it's great when sometimes you can just trade off those. Set your stop on the other side. We're pushing 288.46 today. You give back some of it, but this time this thing's coming in at all-time highs, and they do have their earnings. You're talking about on tomorrow, and we're talking about a $20 move. That's some sweet premium in a $282 stock. You're talking about, uh, is that 6% or so priced in? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, see what else we have on tap for the week for earnings. For news, we'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to oscillate. We got the S&Ps right now up about 11 points. We're talking record highs at 45.16. NASDAQ 100 continuing to accelerate as well. Divergence with the Dow pulling back about 28 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by about 87 points right now, continuing to accelerate in a big way. When we jump around to what else we got going on in terms of news this week, uh, in terms of earnings, we talked about CrowdStrike on Tuesday. We got NetTees as well on Tuesday. We got FHFA Home Price Index, S&P CoreLogic Case Schiller Home Price Index on Tuesday as well. 
Wednesday for earnings, we get Chewy, Campbell's Soup will be in there as well. Uh, in terms of vehicle sales are in there on Wednesday, we get ADP employment. That'll be an important one coming up ahead of the August number for Friday. I mean, you see what we got, folks, a lot of economic numbers coming at us. On Thursday, we got Broadcom. That'll be a big one. DocuSign. We're going to take a look at DocuSign real quick as we wrap up the programs. And then on Friday... There's the number, folks. Employment report, 8.30 a.m. for the month of August. Keep your eye on that one. We'll take a look at DocuSign. Right now, DocuSign, such a strong company. We spiked to 308.74. Uh, there's no reason that we need to sign anything in person ever again, folks. There's no reason why it took this long to begin with. But, man, this equity from 63 up to a price point of 302. You back this up for a five-year weekly. You see the volatility. We come into 2019 at 40 bucks. We're trading in 302. Um, Always tough to be buying at these types of a highs in terms of we were just trading at 176 in May of this year. Not sure why this company gave back so much of it when obviously these are the companies I love, folks, in terms of, you know, they're not going away. They're in the industry that is going to grow. And I had a great college professor that once asked the class a question, I said, would you ever want to be in the best company in a shrinking industry or the worst company in a growing industry. You always want to be in the growing industry, folks, right? A rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, bottom line, you know, electronics, signing things online. That's the future, folks. Nobody is showing up in person. Why would you? Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. Fast Market at 11. Larry Pesavento, Larry Pesavento at noon. Steve Rhodes, 1 o'clock. Tom O'Brien to wrap up the trade today. I appreciate you starting your Monday with me, folks. Stay tuned. It should be an interesting week. we got jobs numbers on Friday. Stay tuned for our man Basil Chapman. He's up next. Thanks, folks.